Hey everyone, it's Joy here for Honeybee Stamps. I made a spooky card for you today with an ink blended background and some stenciled images from the Trick or Treat Coordinating Stencil. Now I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock and I have a the circle die actually from the So Charcuterie stamp set and I die cut out a piece of masking paper. I have my piece of purple tape at the bottom. This is going to be my ground for this little Halloween scene, this really spooky scene. So I laid down my purple tape first to kind of tape off the ground. Then I'm going to lay down the circle mask because that is going to be a very large moon for our background scene. So I wanna ink up this really kind of creepy night sky before I do the moon. So I am using, this color here is scattered straw, and I'm just giving a little bit of glow around the moon. And then I'm coming in, uh, I actually changed this color to carved pumpkin. So I added that a little bit and it just wasn't quite orange enough. So I'm going to come in with carved pumpkin and I just keep going back and forth with both of the colors to really get a good blend. So here's the carved pumpkin and now we've got this really good orange that's gonna go along with the scattered straw. I liked the scattered straw because it's not such a bright yellow which I'm kind of saving for the moon. Then I'm gonna come in with some seedless preserves. I like this because it really has a red tint to it so next to that orange it blends really really well then i'm going to come in with wilted violet and i'm just obviously working out to the side just adding a little bit of color as i go along and then i will finish with black soot but i'm just going to go back and forth till i get a really good seamless blend and this sky is super creepy and i i really like the seedless preserves I think is actually one of my favorite parts of this with the carved pumpkin. I think those two colors together really give it that creepy feel. The other, the wilted violet and the black soot give it that dark nighttime sky. So as you can see, as I keep blending, it just gets better and better. So now I'm gonna come in with the black soot and just add that a little bit on the sides of my card panel. Then I'm going to gently peel up this masking paper because now I want to go ahead and ink or, or ink blend the moon. So I'm just gonna peel that up gently and then we have this nice big open circle and it's gonna be a huge moon. So I am gonna come in with squeezed lemonade on this and I am not trying to ink this perfectly. This, I do not want a really perfect blend. I'm just laying down the color and you can really see it's kind of splotchy, but that's what I'm going for. Then I'm gonna come back in with the scattered straw and only add that in certain areas and leaving that kind of blotchy so it looks like there is some character to the moon, even with just the ink blending. And then we're gonna add a little something later that adds a ton more character to this moon. So I'm gonna blend that out and then I just take that scattered straw and just kind of blend out all the edges and blend into the other colors. Now I'm going to tape off the ground area and I will be using wilted violet and black soot. I want this to not just be a straight black background but a very purpley black background. Because we're gonna be using the Trick or Treat coordinating stencil, those images are all going to be in black. So I wanted the ground to look a little bit different than the stenciled images that we are going to be laying down. So when you peel that back, you can see all of that purple. So here is one of the stencils. This has the trees, it has the ghosts and bats and some um, uh, tombstones and then the other stencil has like the moon and clouds and haunted houses but I'm just going to use this stencil so I'm just inking that up with black soot that's the black ink that I will be using for all of these images and I love how that looks in front of the moon almost I think having that black in front makes it look like the moon is glowing even more now I'm going to come in with the tombstones and just add those uh, around the tree it's going to kind of be all over the ground and some of them I'm going to tilt sideways some of them are going to be straight up and I'm using this really tiny detail blender brush from honeybee stamps and that is perfect for these little tiny images I don't even have to tape anything off because I'm not going to over stencil I am going to stencil the fence on the left side and there's two pieces to the the fence 
super easy to stencil and of course just doing it in black makes it even easier so I did the upright pieces of wood and now I'm going to do the horizontal pieces of wood then I'm going to finish by adding more of the tombstones I just thought filling up this whole area would look really really good and I just think this card is already looking so super creepy I love that sky and I love this stencil because doing these images and keeping it super simple is really fun and easy number one and then you have this great creepy spooky Halloween scene and this is not a lot of work and it's just a bunch of fun ink ink blending so some of these images I am going off of the sides and the bottom the of the using these tombstones of the cardstock going off of the edges to make it feel like the scene is large I will come in and add a little bit more of the black soot around the bottom edges and kind of going up the side just to darken it since the top part of the card panel is has the black soot and a little bit dark in my misty I have my card panel and I'm using the boo stamp and it's large which I absolutely love I am going to prep my cardstock really well but you also want to make sure that your ink is dry so you don't have a bunch of embossing powder all over your background I am going to ink this up with a Versamark ink and then I'm using black embossing powder because I really want this sentiment to be super super shiny if you did not want anything to be shiny just stamp it with the black soot or another black ink and it would keep that same kind of muted down black but I really liked that this sentiment was going to be shiny now I'm going to come in with the cute little bats and just uh, add three of those and that is really making the scene come together and I feel like every time I add some of this black against that moon it just makes that sky really pop so I'm going to add one more on the right here going off of the edge of the card panel again to make my scene feel larger now here's the little secret thing that the little surprise that I wanted to put on the moon this is the lemon drop embossing powder from Ranger ink and it's really has chunky pieces and fine pieces and I wanted this to give character to the moon so I am not putting down any ink I'm sprinkling it on I'm just using my little paintbrush to push it in make sure it's not on the tree as best as I can some pieces got on there but it wasn't a big deal and and I am going to heat from the bottom if you just add your heat tool to the top because there's no ink holding it in place it's just gonna blow everywhere so I am inking it from the bottom till it's almost pretty much melted and then I can come in on the top and finish melting it I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says trick-or-treat onto some black cardstock I'm stamping with Versamark ink and using some white embossing powder and then I'm going to heat that through until it's melted and trim that down and then add a little bit of uh, adhesive to the back of that I'm not adding foam adhesive I want this to be a one layer card traditionally a one layer card won't even have this on it but this is how I liked the sentiment to look but this card is complete with a spooky creepy background using the trick-or-treat coordinating stencil thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon bye